I speak to you in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Y'all, this is so cool. I just want to tell you, this is really cool. Um, We are here today to worship God, but also we are celebrating the feast day of Ralph Adams Cram, Richard Upjohn, and John Lafarge. Now, all three of them were artisans. Um, Upjohn and Cram were architects. Lafarge was a stained glass window person. But we are going to focus exclusively on Cram for two reasons. First is, uh, he's the one that designed this building. And so that's why we're here. Um, But also, um, of those three guys, today is Cram's birthday. So that's why the feast is on this day. So let's just know who's the important one in the three. Just some kind of broad brushstrokes. Um, Cram's bu- uh, born in 1863 um, in New Hampshire, Hampton Falls, New Hampshire. At the age of 18, he moves to Boston and he works for five years um, in an architectural office before he goes to Rome to study classical architecture. While he's in Rome, he's at a Christmas Eve service and he has a conversion experience, like evangelical style conversion experience in a Christmas Eve service. And he becomes an ardent Anglo Catholic. Um, he comes back to Boston and with partners Charlie Wenworth and then later Bertram Goodhue um, starts their own firm uh, and they complete works like St. Thomas Fifth Avenue and the Military Academy at West Point. We were talking about that um, during the gallery talk. But tensions between Goodhue and Cram and rivalries and egos led to a split. Um, Both men continued to work on their own, but Cram in his solo work does these masterpieces like uh, St. John the Divine Cathedral in New York City. You know, like you do. Um, All Saints Chapel, Swanee, Sweetbriar College, Princeton Chapel and University, the old campus at Rice University. Um, Oh, and uh, little old St. Paul's Episcopal Church in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. This is the record of John. When the Jews and priests and Levites from Jerusalem, from Jerusalem to ask him, Who art thou? And 
really believed that buildings could do something that pointed to the transcendent, pointed to something bigger, deeper than just themselves. A lot of stuff comes at you in this life. And Jesus talks about in that gospel about how there are ways to approach life that can root and ground you such that whatever comes at you, whatever gets thrown at you, you might be like a tree in a storm where you bend, but you won't break. It can hold on to you. And a sacramental view of reality is one such preserving and saving worldview. Cram knew that this is what architecture and space can do. They can, buildings can open you to this reality. This building is built to open you to that reality. Because sometimes we need it. How many people, and I, I, I've heard your story, so I'm saying this rhetorically, I know you come in here and there are times you needed to be reminded that there's a sacramental truth to reality because there's some ways this world might have beaten it out of you. In, in the office, at Thanksgiving dinner, with whatever was going on in your Facebook feed and in your news cycle, um, you need comfort 
Um, and, and this space provides it when the changes of this life make you wonder if everything's going off the rails. Um, this room creates space where things are ordered properly. And in a world where sometimes feel like they are profoundly disordered, um, there's this imagination that kicks in in a space like this where you're like, well, if it can be ordered well here, it could also be ordered well out there. Why have a building like this? Well, because you have to know that some things are holy before you can start to understand that everything's holy, right? There has to be some space that is sacred so you can start to wake up to the fact that in a lot of ways, all space is sacred. There has to be a place where heaven and earth come together before you can understand that inside every person is the meeting place of heaven and earth as well. So temples like get us started and then we're supposed to keep going. Cram totally got this and infused his work with it. And there are so many places in this room that I could point to that do this. I just want to point one of them out to you tonight. And some of you have heard me mention this. So right here is the tower, which is the giant tower that you can see from all over the city, poking up to the, the treetops. And up in that upper echelon, there's, there's walls in the tower. There are four windows. And those four windows, each one contains um, an archangel. One of the four archangels that's mentioned in the book of Enoch, right? They are beautiful. They are exquisite. They are also not something any of us can see, right? How many people have ever seen those windows other than like this? You know, how, ma how many people didn't even know they were there? Yeah, a couple people. So, so here's the interesting thing. Why go to all the time, expense, and trouble to put windows up there where nobody can really see them? Answer, they're not for you. They're for God. Their beauty is not for you. It's for somebody else. And here's the thing. What kind of people would it make us to come into this space every day and be reminded that not everything is about us? That might make us into a different kind of people, wouldn't it? That might start to wake us up to some different realities. We honor Cram not simply when we feel prideful about this place, St. Paul's is the greatest, better than First Pres, you know, better than Centenary, which is true, we all know that. No. But like, <laughs> like that's, that's not how we honor Cram. It's not when we, when we feel prideful about this place or we think it's great, even though it is. Um, we honor Cram when we come in here and we let God use this space every week to make us a different kind of people in the world. That is what a building like this should do. So friends, let us honor our founding architect, designing architect, our architect, Ralph Adams Cram, and living, by living up to the mission that this building calls us to for another 90 years, that we could be a house of prayer at 520 Summit Street for all people. Amen.